Welcome to the Christ Connection Podcast. We are here to help and encourage you to enjoy your adventure with Jesus. I'm your host, Kevin Senapati Ratna. Let the journey begin. Hello and welcome to episode number 74 of the Christ Connection Podcast. My name is Kevin Senapati Ratna and I'm glad you could join us today. Today is an errand run episode. These are the uh, slightly shorter conversations with the idea that while you're doing running an errand, while you're doing the dishes, while you're <laughs> doing something else, you can get a little bit to uh, help you on your relationship with Jesus as you go about it. My guest is Eddie Taylor and I'll get to his bio in just a second, but uh, it's just some practical stuff to help you whether it's uh, experiencing joy in difficult seasons, uh, which we all can be encouraged by, why you shouldn't be uh, lonely at the top, dealing with uh, healing on the inside when you've been wounded in life, just uh, good stuff that you can take to the bank and uh, build your relationship with Jesus. So without further ado, my conversation with Eddie Taylor. My guest today is Eddie Taylor of the Taylor Ministry Group, which you can find at taylorministry.com, with a mission to live heaven now. In 2017, God spoke to him and his wife, Beth, to spend the rest of their lives preparing the underground church. Before starting Taylor Ministry Group, he was the pastor of multiple churches. I met Eddie at the first Bold Venture. Uh, You can hear about Bold Venture in actually episode one uh, of the podcast with Lee Grady. Uh, I didn't really know anyone uh, at the time, and we were chatting for a minute, and he invited me to join his van full of people, as I recall, as we drove uh, either dinner, hotel, something like that. And uh, so then we've been together for multiple events since then, and I love Eddie's heart for people, love for the Lord, and so Eddie, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, Kevin. It's a huge pleasure to be with you finally. We've been juggling dates, a lot of it on my end. And so I'm really, really excited to be with you. Yeah, it was a, one of those serendipitous meetings where the Lord brought us together. And I think I told you then my younger brother's name is Kevin, and he led me to the Lord. And so I have high esteem for, <laughs> for anyone named Kevin. So yeah, great to be here. And, and I'm glad to Finally meet the Enjoying Prayer audience. Uh, it's uh, <laughs> we have to lower the expectation though. Then if you if you if Kevin has a high esteem, we'll just lower that down <laughs> down there. Um, now these are what we call errand run episodes, meaning uh, the show is about the length of time that it takes to run an errand, depending on. Uh, who's doing the errand, I guess, is probably part of that. Uh, but I, I figured I'd start with an errand question. When you're out, uh, you're a Southern guy, this may affect it, but if you're out on an errand and you're going to treat yourself to something, what do you get? When I treat myself, a lot of times I run into the local coffee shop and get a flat white, a flat white coffee. I was at a uh, coffee shop that was um, owned by a New Zealander, a Kiwi, and I said, I said, what's your favorite? He goes, a flat white. I go, what? what's that? He goes, it's the way God intended coffee to be drank. <laughs> and, so, and so he was right. And I've enjoyed those ever since. I don't make them at home. Uh, I just have black coffee at home. But when I'm out, I get a flat white. And uh, I'm not a coffee guy. So what's a flat light? Uh... A, a flat white is just coffee and um, a steamed milk. It's a little bit less milk than, say, a latte. Um, if I remember correctly, I'm not, again, I'm not a barista, but I do play one on television. So. I, 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 when people get their coffees, it seems like it's a whole different language. I don't know what's that. Oh yeah. It, it gives people that don't have the ability to make decisions. This one shiny moment that they can make a decision, you know, decaf, mocha, almond milk, soy milk, you know, sugar, stevia. I, I'm the guy that goes to the coffee shop and gets a, a bottle of water, you know, so that, that they look at me like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> I, have friends, I have lots of friends like you. <laughs> All right. So now keeping with the theme of errands, uh, if you are, although we'll get a little more serious here, if you're uh, driving along uh, the road of life uh, and uh, you've, 
Well, maybe I'll, I'll rephrase it. Uh, you, you've gone through some things in life and ministry that might make people want to pull over and just give up. Uh, what has kept you uh, going after what God wants for you uh, when it feels like you'd rather stop? <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think one of those is in Second uh, Corinthians, I believe it's chapter 5 where Paul talks about being compelled by the love of God. I, I just, it's hard for me to stop when I consider all that he's done for me. And then secondly, it's the call and the word that he gave me as a very, very new believer. I, I was born again in November and experienced the baptism in the Holy Spirit on December 31st. So literally like two months later, and there I received, um, the call of the Lord or the renewal of the call of the Lord. I thought I'd heard the call when I was a little boy, but really didn't walk out my faith in my teen years. And so at 22 years old, uh, had a, had a literally a Damascus road experience with the Lord. And then two months later, I was baptized in the Holy spirit and called to ministry and called to discipleship. And that was such a, uh, uh, life changing moment that it's hard for me to, to get very far from having that, oh, yeah, that's why I do this. And, and then you said it, I really love people. I'm a people person. I'm always kind of amazed when I meet ministers and Christians who aren't people pe people. people. <laughs> I think sometimes I've met ministers, especially who were truth guys or truth girls. They're like, well, I'm all about the truth. And I just want to always stop them if I have a relationship with them and go, honestly, God's not in the truth business. Truth is a person. Truth is Jesus. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father but by me, John 14, 6. And so but he's all about people. He's in the people, restoring people, healing people, moving people from death to life. That's what he's all about. Hey. That's a long answer. No, no, that's good because I... It does so resonate with what I've seen of you and what you kind of uh, uh, that relational component uh, to everything. Uh, now, granted, we most of the time we see each other is at bold venture events, and uh, those are definitely on the relational spectrum. <laughs> uh, uh, again, people are probably going to have to go back and. Uh, uh, listen to because the lead lee and i talked a lot about bold venture and what what that dynamic is not your not your normal sunday morning. well maybe for you is it is that your normal sunday <laughs> well um, obviously one of the things that makes bold venture is a discipleship weekend that's really relational and is all about not only hearing the proclamation of god's word in rows but then talking about it in circles and we believe the old ad happens in circles not in rows uh, but um, every every weekend for us is not um, circles every weekend for us it is international Lee also brings in international guests but every weekend for us one of the things we do as Taylor ministry group is we try to minister to the masses to locate the few in other words we believe that when we are on a journey like where Jesus found Matthew Levi at his tax collectors table is that in everything we do, we're trying to find the person of peace, as Jesus spoke about. You know, the person who God wants to use to open up a family or a community or an oikos, a, a oikos, Greek word for a household, a, an area of influence. And so that's one of the things that we try to do is also then equip people to do that, not to miss the moment on the way to ministry. Remember that Jesus was going to raise Jairus' daughter, and that's when he healed the woman with the issue of blood was on the way there. And sometimes as Americans and Westerners, one of the things that we do is we're like, oh, I don't have time to heal you now. I'm on the way to a busy ministry opportunity. That's, that's good. Uh, and I think I, when I prepped for this, I heard you uh, preach also on uh, the idea of uh, uh, Peter and John going on the way to the temple. And uh, it was on the way to what would be ministry prayer time. Uh, that's when the, the miracle happened. So. Must, it must be a recurring theme for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't, I don't want to miss his ministry on the way to do my ministry. Oh, that's good. And I, and I think a lot of us do that, that we're out, you know, we have a plan. And I think as uh, we've got to be so careful that we hold this treasure in earthen vessels, in clay pots. And we understand that on the way to do what we think we want to do, 
that were sensitive to the Holy Spirit who can whisper, reveal, show, and invite us into the adventure of following God. You, you know, the Pharisees knew the word of God better than anyone in their day. They just missed the revealed word of God when he was standing right in front of them because they had their plan, their agenda. They knew what they were looking for politically. They knew what they were looking for um, ministry-wise, and Jesus just didn't hit those marks. And so I heard a pastor say one time, Kevin, in a meeting that, uh, that we were at, he said, really, if you're honest when you read the New Testament, up to the moment you're born again, you all disciples in a seekers category. But the moment you're born again, you really have to read the scripture, the New Testament, as a Pharisee, <laughs> that you're the one now with truth. You're the one now with word. And you need to listen to Jesus, his admonitions to them, to be careful for religion and control and politics and those kind of things. Uh, that's uh, <laughs> when I was in Bible college, we had to go through the book of Hebrews, or I was in a Hebrews class, and I remember their professor saying, okay, as part of your final, I think it was the final exam, what, uh, which of the categories, you know, we study the Sadducees, Pharisees, which one are you going to fall into if you were, and I honestly like, yeah, probably would have been a Pharisee. That's, that's just probably where I would have landed if I <laughs> Yeah, but, yeah but, those, those of us who are professional Christians, we get paid for our faith. It's very dangerous for us if we don't realize we're always a step away from being a Pharisee. And so we need to love people and, and look for opportunities to help the weak, the less, those who can't help us back. Well, I, we're all, also my, one of my favorite uh, John Maxwell quotes is, we're all always one step away from stupid, but... <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it, yeah, we'll move sure. on from that because uh, that that could be that could get very personal for me very quickly. But <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought it'd be fun since I have heard you preach on multiple occasions. I went through my notes and um, pulled out my Eddie Taylor uh, statements, and uh, I thought I'd throw out some of them to you and uh, see if you want to expound on them a little bit further. Uh, sure. Uh, I heard you say something to the effect of if leadership is lonely at the top, you're doing it wrong. Uh, what do you mean by that? <laughs> yeah, honestly, I've heard that growing up and you have too. And I think it's a cop out because again, if you're a Christian leader, your job is not to have followers, but develop other leaders. And the way that you develop other leaders is to bring them into your inner circle, to bring them in to the decision-making process. One of the main differences between the Old Covenant and the New Covenant is in the Old Covenant you do see, in the Old Testament you do see the man or the woman of God who goes up on the mountain, you know, that Moses, Elijah, Deborah. But in the New Testament you see people, Jesus and Paul and Peter, they do team ministry. Even when, Paul, even when Peter goes to Cornelius' household in, in Acts chapter 10, he has a posse with him. And so I think our goal is to continually develop um, the late Dr. Howard Hendricks said this. He said, every leader needs three significant relationships in their life. They need a Barnabas to go before them, a Silas to go beside them, and a Timothy to come after them. And so for me, the Barnabas is the person who helped rescue you. He or she is the person who's your spiritual father or mother, and they're the ones who know everything about you that can put you in jail. <laughs> you know, they can do <laughs> And so I have, I really have two of those in my life. I have uh, Ray Owens and then I had, who is uh, a youth pastor, was my wife's youth pastor. He prayed for me to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, mentored me and helped lead family discipleship ministries, which was uh, a network of ministers that Beth and I founded. And we actually, when we started Taylor Ministry Group, we leadership of that over to Papa Ray. And secondly is Apostle L.A. Joyner, who's retired now but that led a network of churches um, known as the Church Foundational Network all over the world. And he was actually from my hometown and was my pastor for a season. And so uh, then the, the Silas is the person, you know, Paul had Silas. You see that Silas traveled with him after he moved on from his time with Barnabas. I call that your foxhole friend, the person who's with you when the bullets start flying. And I, I have two of those and I'm very grateful, besides my wife Beth, obviously, is uh, Lee Grady who I can call Lee at any point, text him anywhere around the world, and he's going to love on me and come, come, you know, call me, minister to me. And then Pastor Rodney Thrift, who's the pastor of a great church down here in South Georgia, Destination Church. And Rodney and I have been friends literally since I was in the fifth grade and he was the third grade. 
Wow. And so, yeah, our wives were both in Ray's youth group together. And so when we both came into the baptism of the Holy Spirit, our friend, we had separated because he went into the United States Army and I went the route of college. And then we became friends again. And we literally have ministered together all over, uh, I think, mainly America. I don't know if we've done an international trip together yet, but we talk sometimes two, three times a week. And he, he's my false soul friend. And then thirdly, you should never be lonely as a minister because you should always have a Timothy with you. There should be someone with you that they're watching your life. They're learning from your example. One of the key verses for my life is second Timothy two, two. And these things you've heard of me in the presence of many witnesses teach faithful men who can teach others also. So a disciple is someone who learns, obeys and teaches others to do the same. And so as Paul walks with Timothy, Timothy sees that Paul's the real deal. People do what people see. So it's not just he hears him from a distance. You impress from a distance, but you impact up close. And they're side by side together. Paul watches Timothy's, or Timothy watches Paul's life and Paul watches Timothy's life. And together they grow. And so if it's lonely at the top, you're doing it wrong. That's a lot. No, oh, that's, that's, that's good. That's a... Uh... Uh, what we all all need and should be uh, working towards. Uh, you also said uh, you should not be defined. You are not defined by your wounds. Uh, mm -hmm. Boy, what 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 have you done uh, since this is a journey? We all we all get wounded if we've been around for any mm -hmm. period of time. Uh, what have you done to mm -hmm. not to let the wounds of your life become labels on you? <laughs> yeah. Um, the, the, yeah, the exact quote is you're not defined by the worst moment of your life, but you're defined by the best moment eternity. That's better. And, <laughs> and that's why I, I want to just kind of flesh out a little bit. Well, because that explains how, how I process wounds, how I process, you know, we, we launched a church plant in 2000 and, and it started really well, you know, it grew to 200 people pretty rapidly. And then by 2003, it imploded and closed. And you know, I learned a lot about life and leadership and, you know, how to, how to graciously or sometimes not graciously walk through mistakes. And, and then, and, uh, when I met you in 2010 or so, right, I had just come through a season of pretty extreme burnout and, uh, you know, it, it's just been a challenge. But one of the things that we found is if we will get into the presence of God and really behold Jesus and see what he did and what he's doing for us. And really one of the things that helped me come into that was I, I heard, uh, I don't know if you ever heard, I heard Winnie Banoff say, Coco Banoff say, that to fully understand Galatians 2.20 is to understand that it's a stronger term than even the English translation. It's that I was co-crucified with Christ and I no longer live. That when I understand that he didn't just die for me, he died as me. And he, I was buried with him. We all believe this. I was buried with him in baptism, raised with him to new life. And that I also was ascended with him. And now Ephesians 2, 6, I'm seated with him in the heavenly realm that I can't be defined by anything other than him. So words and labels and events, those shame and of the enemy and not of what it means to be a New Testament Christian, to walk with Jesus and allow him to become your life. More, more than uh, Christianity is not a transactional event. It's a relational process that starts at a transaction. And so a lot of times when we share our, tran our testimony, it's very transactional. Like I, I did, I came to faith in 1986. But 1986 began the journey and will continue to throughout all of eternity. Glory be to his name. Amen. Hey, well, I know that that topic is uh, something we definitely can, I mean, we could talk a long time about that's something that you, is a, a passion of yours. I remember, uh, uh, I think you and I were having a, uh, one of our bold ventures. You took a napkin out and was drawing a diagram for me. And <laughs> so uh, that, that, that's what we do, I guess, when we, we have yeah. conversations. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but uh, so maybe wait, well, uh, maybe at some point have a, a round two and go deeper uh, on that one. But l let me just grab one more because uh, people are probably starting to uh, think about checking out at their uh, wherever they're going or uh, rounding the corner on that f final uh, grocery thing or what not. Uh, the devil is after your joy. Did I get that one right or I copy that one wrong? And uh, and what do, can we do to fight? Uh, keep our joy 
Well, the enemy's after your joy because the joy of the Lord is your strength and joy and peace are two thirds of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God's righteousness, joy and peace in the Holy Ghost. And so if he can get us to live out of devotion, excuse me, out of duty rather than devotion or delight, and then our living relationship becomes work and it becomes drudgery and not something or someone we look forward to partnering with, but he moves from being heavenly father to an angry uh, warden or taskmaster and so we begin to see him as that way that limits our, our our faith it limits our creativity it limits our hope hope is the expectation of a good end and when i delight in him and i take joy in him and i learn that the joy of the lord is my strength then i can go through difficult seasons knowing that if it's not good it's not over and and that fuels me in 2012 if um, if western and christians all around the world need a message it's this this is a season it will come to pass we, we want to learn the lessons of 2020 so that we can be effective in 2021 and beyond um as god wants to use us as the church maybe takes different shapes and forms but until christ returns we are joyfully carrying the message of life change, the message of hope, and the message that Christianity is not about making bad people better. It's about making dead people alive. And that's fantastic. That, that is joy, joy inspired, it should be joy inspiring. Um, right, so as, as people are, are heading towards a checkout line, we want the, uh, them to know what, what you're up to. So what, what's a little bit more about that? Uh, I'm sure you could take a half an hour on this, but what, in a nutshell, what is uh, Taylor Ministry Group about and uh, where, where you head? Yeah, so we do camps, retreats, church conferences, carrying both the message of health in marriage and living from joy and the finished work of the cross and wholeness because we believe that that healthy leaders lead healthy organizations and healthy churches and organizations help produce healthy families healthy families lead healthy communities and so it's important what happens in the white house i hope people are praying i hope people are going to vote on november 3rd if they watch this after november 3rd i hope you voted but but listen the important thing is the important thing is is what happens at your house and we believe that God wants there to be healthy leaders. And so that all we found out as 2020 happened in, in uh, quarantine, that we couldn't travel as much, that we began to minister specifically and primarily to leaders, helping them maintain health and joy during these times of crisis and shift and change. And so, so really, uh, again, our, our goal is to help leaders obtain health and, and uh, lead healthy organizations and then to see that spill out into their congregation. And then we do that again by events. But then the goal, and I, honestly, if your uh, listeners, if the Enjoying Prayer family would pray for us, we know God said something to us about helping develop and prepare the underground church in the West. I don't have a clue what that looks like. We're exploring podcasts, e-courses, books, Bible studies. Uh, Beth is about halfway through the book. I've written a Bible study on the life of Samson. All, all of these things is because we believe that if what happened, and I don't know if you're back in church in Minnesota. Yeah, you are because you've been traveling. I know some people aren't in church yet. Is we want to help so that if the church loses her buildings, the church will go forward like she has in um, China and other places around the world. And we believe it's possible because we've seen discipleship happen um, for three decades now. And we believe that God can use a generation who loves him and loves people. Uh, and we will uh, pray for you with that in just a moment. But be, uh, before we get to that, any, uh, so the website again is taylorministry.com, correct? Uh, That's correct. And, and there are links from there to both our Facebook page, which is Taylor Ministry Group, our Twitter feed, Instagram, YouTube. You pretty much can search Taylor Ministry Group or Eddie and Beth Taylor, and you can find all those resources. And those things are growing. We try to put something up a couple of times a week if we can. YouTube, uh, when I minister places or Beth ministers places, we try to get those things up. And it's a, a wonderful thing. Uh, anything, we'll, we'll pray for your ministry. Anything else, uh, like uh, my tradition is to uh, pray for our guest at the end. Anything else I can uh, pray for you and the audience can pray for you when they hear this? 
yeah, just that that we would um, have ears to hear and a heart to obey as we get these um, specific uh, instruction from the Lord going forward. And we don't, I don't want to spend my life, Beth and I don't want to spend our life doing something that misses the mark. And to do our part in helping prepare the local church, uh, we want to be very specific and obedient and um, in that. And so I would appreciate prayer for that, for that Beth and I would have ears to hear and a heart to obey uh, what God is saying to us to help prepare his bride. Amen. Lord, in the, uh, I love this man, Eddie. I pray that you would bless him and Beth, and I pray you'd bless the, the whole ministry team. I pray that, as he had just said, that he would have an ear to hear and a heart to respond. I pray for wisdom from on high, the direct uh, 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 inside of heaven, Lord, even thoughts that are uh, not even, he doesn't know what this all is going to look like around the corner. He's gotten a prophetic word and that I pray that he'd be able to walk it out step by step, moment by moment. Uh, Lord, I, I pray that there would, uh, there would be a renewing, a restoring, a refreshing uh, during this season and during this time. Thanks for what he's invested in us. Uh, and bless us now, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I Eddie, thank you for being on the show today. Thank you so much, Kevin. It's always an honor to talk to you, whether it's text or video chat or face-to-face, -face, which is my favorite. Amen. Well, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed that conversation and found something that you can take away to apply to your relationship with Jesus. Uh, and before you go, why don't you head on over to ChristConnection.cc slash podcast for the show notes. And we have all sorts of other resources there to help you on your walk with Jesus. Again, that's ChristConnection.cc slash podcast. And then uh, the three S's that I like to share, and maybe it's because my last name is Senapati Rodna. I don't know. But uh, one S, don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe. We want you to be able to get those right into whatever player you're listening to and that they'll arrive to you. Uh, S for uh, share it with a friend. Uh, sharing is caring, as they like to say. Uh, but really, we want to be a blessing to as many people as possible. What's uh, one or two friends uh, that could be blessed by this as well? And finally, S. Uh, for say something i'd love to hear uh from you if you're listening to this wherever you are in the world maybe just go over to uh one of our social medias and just say where you're listening from that'd be uh, fun to hear uh, and we're at enjoying prayer on instagram twitter and facebook again that's at enjoying prayer and we'll see you over there and until next time thanks for listening <laughs>